I promised you guys some more South Park. So, someone recommended this video. Top 10 most hilarious movie parodies. And, uh, I don't know why I'm talking all zesty. Maybe I've been watching a little bit too much of Fousey Tube drama. But let's just jump right into it. Butters! Precious. Oh my god. You should be f***ing back my precious. Full parodies, references, borrowed characters, and story arcs. I'm ready, baby. These guys have done it all let's to wink go. at the movies that have shaped our culture. All right, So, baby. let's review the... God, he uses the Mr. Beast text. 10 best movie parodies on South Park. Number 10. All right. Independence Day. Okay. Chef, we're in a repeat. A repeat? When the kids notice they're living a rerun of Cartman's probe, they... <laughs> Cartman's probe. Well, I don't like that they talk so much about child muddles. Please stop. Chef go to find a weird space scientist. That's pretty much a Jeff Goldblum discount from the 96 movie Independence Day. All right, all right. Pod? What's it doing? It, it's sending a transmission of some kind. Got it. It's just sending images of cities and people and stuff. The kids get abducted by aliens. Oh, this is Chef episode. relies upon Jeff's character oh, and his scientific mumbo jumbo to figure out what's going on. He discovers the same horrifying truth the kids are learning in outer space. Students at colleges usually have bicycles. Bi bi binary. It's binary code. A few moments later. Okay. We've recently come across an alien transmission. I'm afraid that Earth, uh, all of Earth, is nothing but an intergalactic reality TV show. Jeff has doomed Earth oh, this by the truth, and now the whole plan. Oh my God! This was the episode where the, the the producers of the Earth reality show are like have those big noses, and they like have all those Jew references that they're controlling the world. Oh my God! And it is about to meet its end, and there's nothing Earthlings can do to avoid it. Or is there? Well, you kids can go back to Earth if you want, but I'm afraid it won't be there for long. The show's been canceled. The Universal Network heads, they say the Earthlings have become aware of the show, so it won't be funny anymore. Jeff comes up with the same idiotic oh, plan God, they used in dude. that movie. But thankfully, the kids are the ones who use some effective coercive methods. Yep, they get the Jewish kid in the group to go talk to the executive producers of the reality show, and with the power of nepotism, they save the day. God, I love this humor. Measures on the executive. Oh my God, dude, just look at them. It makes me so sad. I'm sure you'll see that if you give our world time, it will become even more outrageous and violent. There's even World War III to look forward to. And then we won't have to show anybody so true. the picture Kenny has if you guys suck in each other's chagons. All right, all right, all right. Number nine. That's it. That's all they needed to hear. Let's go. Was that an Epstein reference? Children of the corn. When I wanted to get rid of my mom's last boyfriend, I just called the police and said he was molesting me, and I haven't seen him for three months. Wow. Yo! He's just like your average kid on Discord today. We've grown so much as a society. Three months without parents. When Cartman shows all the kids in town the trick of the M word. This is so bad, bro. This is literally so cursed. This is so toxic. Oh my God. I literally thought I've seen everything. To get rid of their parents, South Park becomes a replica of Children of the Corn's creepy children ridden town of Gatlin, Nebraska. Smiley Town? That's a strange name. Well, it'll have to do. It's probably the only town for a hundred miles. Hello? Is anybody here? Oh, God. I'm a mechanic, I guess. Oh, what seems to be the problem? It's just you here? Just like in the movie, a couple of outsiders get in town trying to get some help after their car breaks down. Uh -oh. But things get hard yeah. as they face the horrors of Smiley Town and oh, their God. search for a working phone. Mark, oh, I'm scared. God. Don't be Wait, who arrested the police? <laughs> the outsiders get involved in a war between enemy children factions that have gone feral and regularly offer human sacrifices to their provider, John Elway, what? in the form of a statue downtown. But in the end, the outsiders manage to put some reason into the kids and get things back to normal. He won't take care of you. Your parents, your providers. Oh my will. God, is that some, is that a, a lesson? I'm ready to get myself to Mr. Elway. God, Butters, please stop, please. Here's our cell phone, dude. Will you call the police for us? Hey, looks like you're not so bad with kids after all. Number eight. Damn. The Shining. We are going into business for ourselves. You are all looking at the new owner, Blockbuster Video. Blockbuster. Sorry to hear that, bro. You should have invested in integrity. And we can watch movies whenever we want. Come on, you guys want to see it? You excited, Stan? Huh? Sorry, I'm watching a movie on my iPad. Only... Oh! Randy Marsh could think that it was a great business idea to buy Blockbuster Video in 2012. And, as oh, always, so drags the whole that, family bro. into an unwanted adventure in a solitary place amidst the icy mountains, exactly like in the plot in the 1980s, The Shining. Buddy flicks, chick flicks, all on Blu-ray or DVD. Well, what do you think? It's 
Awesome. You should try to get it on that ancient civilization show so that people can see how cultures used to live. From day one, Damn. it becomes obvious what a terrible idea this was. But Randy surprise. refuses to give in. As days go by, all work and no play makes Randy a dull boy. Hunt ah, dude, every time I see Randy do anything, it's like, oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Dude needs some integrity. Pronto. Dude needs to get high on that integrity ASAP. Did by visions of ghosts and obsessed with making his store thrive. Can I help you find something? <sighs> oh, I get it. Video stores are so old they have ghosts in them. Okay, thanks. I Got get em. it, but you're wrong. Got the war is over. Let's go rent a movie at Blockbuster. Ha ha ha. And since it couldn't end any other way, <laughs> all the confinement and obsession transform into a murderous rage, leading oh Randy to try to what? kill his entire family. Uh, what? While Shelly burns down the place. Stan? Daddy wants to have a little talk, Stan. Dude, I do not trust anyone that wrote any of this stuff ever. I'm coming! I'm coming, Stan! <laughs> the face is so stupid. Oh my god. Number six. That's Blockbuster, ladies and gentlemen, a thriving gigalith of our modern day society. Seven, Inception and Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, how about this? Old sandwich in a baggie filled with maggots. Yeah! No, don't take my empty bottle. Give me back my sandwich! Whenever. <laughs> okay. Everyone discovers that Stan and Mr. Mackey are compulsive hoarders. They're sent to non conventional therapy in the style of 2010's Inception's dream sharing sessions. The idea is to travel through their unconscious mind and discover the root trauma that's affecting them. And when everyone enters Mackey's mind, things get dark fast. Hey, now! Hi, Billy. Nice to see you. Okay. Come here. <laughs> You're gonna die, Mackie. Hold his legs. Oh, my God. What? Whoa, wait. What am I doing here? Just like in Inception, the plot gets more complex by the second. Dude, I freaking love Inception parodies. Because Inception has, it has a plot hole or two. So I love when they parody Inception by making it more and more wild. And every time Inception's parodied, if it doesn't get insanely crazy and nonsensical, it's just, it falls flat. With the show mocking this aspect of the movie at every step. To make things more outrageous, they solve Mackie's trauma by using Wait. Freddy Krueger to kill his childhood abuser. This is just like Rick and Morty. In the Inception parody, they literally also found the Freddy Krueger ripoff. Oh my God, why is this? face a testicle so many questions more outrageous they solve Mackie's trauma by using Freddy Krueger to kill his childhood abuser and banish him from his dreams and memory no would you okay don't touch my baby oh, no go would you oh god why is there so much of this please I'll give a hoot okay our dream bullets don't hurt it <laughs> there's a real hoot for you woodsy <laughs> this makes no fucking sense it's dead after such a traumatic journey, Stan isn't even interested in unveiling his root trauma. He's just instantly cured. Or is he? But dude, there must be something in your past you're not dealing with. Don't care. After going through all that crap and seeing what happened to Maggie, I don't want any part of therapy. That wasn't your therapy. <laughs> Numbers. Oh my god. Six. Heavy metal. It's not actually cat urine, but male cats, when they're marking their territory, uh, spray a concentrated urine to fend off other male cats, and and that can get you really high. Okay, re really, really high. This is like literally one of those Mudahar rants on our podcast where he's like, guys, did you know that cat urine, if ingested in just the right amount, it can get you high? Trust me, I know. And you're like, okay. <laughs> An anti-drug talk at school does more okay. harm than good when Mr. Mackey accidentally teaches the kids a popular method to get high and unleashes a cat urine abuse epidemic in town. Someone get PETA to react to this shit now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel anything? Well, Kenny, are you buzzed? No. No, what am I thinking? I shouldn't do this. Why is he throwing out the cat in the plastic bag? When the drug users get up oh all in their God dream space, we get to see it. all the imagery and music from 1981's heavy metal. The animation style oh changes drastically, God. reflecting the one from the movie. And the user lives in an alternate oh fantasy world oh full of monsters and breasts. But where are the monsters with breasts? I know that maybe I'm a little bit weird. I'm a little too weird for South Park. But, uh, Monster Girls? <laughs> oh, they're everywhere. I see that you're enticed by my daughter's awesome rocking <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! I couldn't stay away. 
Where's your rockin' kids? The episode drops a sub- Incredibly and unfathomably based. Plot within this world involving Kenny and Gerald Broflovsky fighting for the major bootage of the king's daughter. Sadly for them, all the epicness and breasts are nowhere to be seen in the real world. No! It's like me, when I'm like, wow, Fifi, your VTuber model has some nice badonka donks, and then, then you learn the truth. They've been going at it for a good 30 minutes. She's mine, you little <laughs> Number five. That's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Please make it stop. Please leave. Please stop. The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, boys, Butter's parents want to borrow the Lord of the Rings video we rented. Could you take it over to them? You're sending us on a quest? You ask of us to take the one video to the House of Butters? The kids use their imagination while uh... playing the Lord of the Rings to take an actual VHS copy of the movie to Butters' house. But Randy hands them the wrong video cassette, and the kids end up unknowingly wandering around with a filthy movie in their hands. Oh, hello, boys. Oh, you're one of those you call porn filthy? Wow. My father has asked that we bring you this copy of Lord of the Rings. Well, thank you very much, kind heroes. Look what we have for you to watch. Lord of the Rings. Oh, boy. Finally, I get to see it. A few moments later. Whoa, whoa. What are you doing? The queen and king of Stanza's house wish the Lord of the Rings returned to them. Randy and Sharon try to retrieve the video, but Butters has had a taste of its power, and it's changed them. Butters! Oh no. The precious. It does such a bad job. Could you bring back my precious? Uh, my precious, this is what he meant to say. My smeared impression is known as incredibly scary. Oh, hobbitses. On the other side of town, the quest progresses as the kids come to know its true power. Only a paladin with a high constitution should watch the tape. Therefore, I think it is a job for you, talent. Bro, that's literally everyone playing Baldur's Gate right now. Angar the Black. A few. <laughs> He's got to get the black nose shot. Two moments later. I'm not playing anymore. I'm not playing anymore. Whoa, wait, what'd you see? I don't know. I don't want to know. I'm out. Fearing the tape's Man. power, the kids decide to mimic the Fellowship's journey into Mordor and return this cursed video to the evil place where it came from. Go with the tape, Butters! The I'm evil place from whence it came! Come on, man, you had one job! Never let go! Fine! Precious! No! Number they literally threw Smeagol into the fires of Mount Doom. Number four, Cloverfield. Ever since your father got that stupid video camera, he thinks he has to film everything the family does. All right, here we are. Marsh family gathered for another dinner. A double episode loosely. Dude, can you imagine vloggers? It's like they make Randy out to be some right. insufferable douchebag right now. All right, guys. Here we are. Marsh Marsh family another dinner. For another Meanwhile, the Ace family is out there pushing babies out of their vaginas just for the sake of content. Like, straight up, this. This is not a parody of vloggers. Vloggers are a parody of this. Dinner. A double episode loosely adapting 2008's found footage style movie Cloverfield, with Randy as the idiot handling the camera. It's the perfect excuse for the guys at South Park to experiment with animation format and narrative technique. Animation format and narrative technique sounds like a job for AI! But adding a tad of that absurdity to the mix, of course. Our world is facing a crisis of disastrous proportions. I'm talking, of course, about Peruvian flute bands. Damn. Damn. By RCDs, they music at. Gracias. As the kids actually travel to Peru to uncover older than time secrets buried deep in the jungle, Randy stays at home, witnessing and immortalizing the attack of the stupidest monsters ever. Oh no. But hey, at least we get to see the monsters here, right? Damn. What is that sound? It's my asshole. What is that thing? Stupid plot aside, we have to admit the episode is neatly done, and it perfectly mimics the original film in all its vacuity. I respect it. Oh my god! Number three. I respect it. Terminator, Akira, and no. 2001: A Space no. Odyssey. It's not a tumor. Ten different compartments for every subject in school: an electronic pencil sharpener, four plastic bags with electronic zippers, copy machine, fax, a better picture of Dawson's Creek on the back than cow, flat screen TV, and of course, Unstar. Wow, cool. In a hilariously no. creative homage from Parker and Stone to classic sci-fi movies. We have this gem of an episode mixing several no. elements from the plots of 1984's The Terminator, 1988's oh, anime cool. breakthrough movie Akira, and Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey from- I'm getting Akira flashbacks right now. Editor, make it a meme. 
make it a meme and, and put raven thighs on for the meme. Just the thighs. It's like, you, you do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Leave me alone! Ooh. Ah. Akira! Ah. All of this only to tell the story of a very special trapper keeper. Mm. Got it! Hey, dude, he's running off with your trapper keeper! Oh no! <laughs> Trapper Keeper has to be destroyed! Cartmon, who could have seen this Park, coming? Which three years from now manifests itself into an omnipotent what super the? being and destroys all of humanity. But Cartman. Not humanity! You can't just let this Trapper Keeper go. Not even after hearing the cyborg's tale about the future destruction of humanity. And as it. Eh, destruction of humanity is overrated, happens to everyone. Was predicted, it starts assimilating and growing. Just like Tetsuo and Akira. I think Akira references are kind of based. He's not gonna open it. Break it down. Let's go. We are Trapper Keeper. We are one. A part of your friend must still be alive in there. Kyle has chosen to enter Bro. the monstrosity's body to try and reach for its CPU. Oh my god, I, dude, you gotta have children stop entering into the bodies of other children reaching for their CP. This is not okay. Reenacting both the aesthetics and tense dialogues with Hal and Odyssey. Why did he whisper that? I'm feeling really uncomfortable right now. I need to remove the CPU. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Kat. Screw you! <laughs> Kyle's got to succeed. He's just got to. Uh, I can't reach the CPU. A few moments later. What are you doing? Get oh my out. God! Is that a Karen? That'll work. My way. Oh no! Now there's two of those things. Ah! about to get fat phobic no i think that other thing is rosie o'donnell number two. Ah! <laughs> oh my god oh my god i'm literally crying high school musical Okey what's high school dokey. musical one and two dude it's only the most popular thing with kids in our age group yeah True. where the hell have you guys been hello Disney's High School Musical was so ubiquitous in 2006 that even South Park had to do something about it. And oh boy did they do it. Creating a satirical masterpiece making us see how stupid the thing really was to begin with. Well, I'm out guys. If this is what's cool now, I think I'm done. I no longer have any connection to this world. I feel this so much! Me every time Disney decides to put out something amazing. It's like, it all started from the Emoji Movie. Did you know that the Emoji Movie actually turned them a profit? And ever since then, they were like, wow, we just need to jump on some relatively popular shit, and we don't actually even have to make anything worth watching. We could just we could just kind of coast off, off everything. Yep, that was Sony. Same deal, bro. Redoing The Little Mermaid and making another Indiana Jones and all that recent gobbledygook slop garbage. I feel you, Cartman. You and I, we are one and the same. I'm gonna go home and kill myself. Flipping the inclinations of the movie's protagonist and his obnoxious father, they drastically altered the plot of the movie and created one of the most hilarious one-shot characters okay. we've ever seen on the show. What? Just put a melody to the words that you're saying and soon Dad, you'll Dad, I want to join the basketball team. Singing and dancing and basketball? I know, that's kind of why I like it. It's my life, Dad. Don't make me slap you. I will slap your face so super hard. Yes, In the yes, end. do it, Daddy, do it. And they brilliantly showed us that not even our regular team of Stan, Kyle, Eric, and Kenny is impervious to trends and external influences. The poor guys didn't notice that the girls liked Brighton, and not the stupid dancing and singing thing. Yeah, that was a sad thing to see. Damn. Do the what you're doing, it's what's cool and popular with everyone else. Chew, baby, chew and Brighton, can we watch you practice basketball? Uh, sure. And number one, okay. 300. Oh, Have what? I didn't know they parodied 300. thought of being with another woman? Oh, goodness, no! Oh, God. Zack Snyder's 300 is taken as one of South Park's biggest laughing stocks oh ever in this God, episode. Dude. The way they change up that story really tells you everything you need to know about what these guys thought about the movie. Well, what are we supposed to do, Janet? We stand and fight. When the Persians come, we tell yes. them we aren't leaving Lesbos. Yes. You see what? the movie diluted into the journey of a transitioned what? Mrs. Garrison oh. who becomes a promiscuous lesbian and gets involved in protecting a famous lesbian bar from being bought by some Persian businessman. They what? Yes. Is lesbos. This might be the worst thing I've ever seen, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. I really, <laughs> I am ending my career today. If you don't mind, excuse me. I'm just gonna go to the other room and uh, kill myself. Your blue carpet and gold curtain rods and shoving up your Persian butt. Come on, seriously, let us in. Never. 
They take 300's most powerful character, its Persian villain Xerxes, and completely subvert him when they reveal he is actually a big, masculine, sexually frustrated what? lesbian. I am all levels of confused. Whatever respect they had left for the movie, they threw it down the drain in the following sequences. I know you're actually a woman. I hired Mexicans to spy on you. They saw you working out at Kerr. This is the worst shit I've ever seen in my life. Thanks for chilling with us, everybody. Please be sure to subscribe for more South Park. Oh my god, dude, that was abysmal. Jesus. Oh my god, dude. Well. We almost got canceled by my own internet and fat people, so I feel like this has been W of a stream all in all. This this is that doesn't get much more exciting than that. That was that was something. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.